hi welcome again in this video i'm going to show you how to do displacement on landscape inside unreal engine 5. here you're looking at some pathway with some rocks you can see we have displacement over here so i can show you here let me put zero displacement right now we only have the normal map and you can see how flat it is and then i can go somewhat crazy like okay some value like this then you can see displacement over there in this case uh, this value doesn't look good but you get the idea you can do displacement like this if you really want in this texture like something around 50 or 30 looks nice so yeah i'll go with that this is how it looks on the texture side so then i can show you the mesh or the wireframe and you can see how dense it is like like this and we can do lod controls as well for example if i put a lod distribution of 1.2 you can see in in the closer you can see more vertices or triangles but at the distance you don't see much like that's you you have control to do all these things uh, and it's pretty interesting all right then i mentioned unreal engine 5 doesn't have tessellation support which is the usual way we did the displacement in, in unreal engine 4 here we have something experimental called virtual height field mesh so we are using that to do proper displacement and technically it's far superior than tessellation and it's more performant and it gives more details but in, in the same time it's some experiment technology so you might see some issues with that all right anyway let's see how we can use virtual height field mesh in unreal engine 5 and i'm going to show you some things like lod distribution some of the problems with that and how, how the future would, would look like and more into this all right so let's get started let me explain a little bit about scene here we have a landscape created using a landmass plugin and open land as a landscape material uh, here you can see some pathway and i use some uh, mega scan texture for that one so you can see the uh, textures over there so this is just painted over the landscape using the the usual paint brushes and you know, we have set the normal roughness and also the height texture and we, we don't do displacement right over here because it doesn't make sense right now because we haven't do anything so now i'm gonna add rvt support into my project that is very critical for the virtual height field mesh then go to edit project settings search for virtual and make sure you have enabled this checkbox called enable virtual texture support like this all right and then since we are using open land we have a one click rvt support so we have widget over, over, over this directory contain open land widgets i'm going to right click and run this widget so basically i can click this button and it will add all the things related to rvt into my project you can see volume site and everything is configured all right now we have rvt support in my project and we can continue then i need to install a plugin then i'm going to edit plugins and search for virtual height field mesh i have already enabled that one so you have enabled this and restart your project so then i'm going to add some item into the scene so i'm going to create place actors so i like to put it over here and then i'm going to search for virtual yeah you can see virtual height field mesh just drag that into your scene it doesn't matter where you put that just drag that into your scene all right and then uh, select the virtual height field mesh from the world outline and go to the details panel and here you need to select the virtual texture here so you can see a drop down you can see two virtual texture volumes so you need to select the height volume and then click the copy bound so then it will create a bounding box around my scene all right and then uh, you need to set this mix mat texture frankly i'm quite not sure what it does but try to create one click build this is something you are baking make sure you save that somewhere closer to your map or the other or the level right i'm gonna save it and then it will build the min max text for me you can see and that's all we need to do i think we have to do this uh, time to time as we change the landscape but now we have the mesh and then scroll a little bit down so here we have a checkbox called actor hidden in the editor here we have hidden the actor in the editor but i think in order to work with this we need to see that inside the editor i'm gonna uncheck that so as soon as i did that you can see my landscape looks weird that's totally fine and then i'm gonna go to the lit and wireframe mode you can see how dense my landscape is then let's try to hide the virtual height field mesh so this is how the normal landscape looks like and then uh, this is after the virtual height field mesh added so you can see how dense it is it's quite fast you don't really need to worry about how it affects the performance of your landscape so then go to the normal lit mode so then let's try to fix this how we're going to fix this is quite interesting In, inside the virtual height field mesh we need to put a material as well so the 
easiest way to do this is set the your the current landscape material so in in my case it is uh, mi my open land all right this one so this should be the the instance that you you are using for the your landscape now it looks a little bit weird so that's that's totally fine we're gonna fix this right now and go to your landscape material in the in in, the, in this case the open lands landscape material so I'm, I'm opening it right now here and search for rvd cache so i'm gonna enable this checkbox so basically it will get the uh, texture data from the rvd and uh, render on the on the landscape and also we are using the same material on the virtual height field mesh so we can get the same details so so basically we are rendering twice for the for the landscape and also the virtual height field mesh since both are the same so we don't see any any difference all right now let's do some uh, displacement custom one is my paint layer used to paint these rocks so then uh, we have a displacement multiplier and I'm going to explain how, how this works in a moment. And then I'm going to put some value like maybe 100. Immediately it will add height information to my height field mesh and that's all we need. Of course this 100 doesn't uh, look nice in this case. Let's put something around 50. And you can see how, how nice it is. And it's quite fast. And I can put the player here. And so I can move here and there. And yeah, it's, 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 pre it's pretty good. All right, now we know how to add virtual height field mesh and how to do some dis displacement. So likewise, you can do this for any kind of uh, paint layer you added to your landscape and it's quite interesting. And here we have talked specifically about doing this with open land, but in a moment I'll show you how to do this with your own uh, landscape material and it's, it's not that hard. Right, now let's talk about the LOD distribution and how dense my la virtual height field mesh could get and how we can control that. So first, let's go to the wireframe mode. Alright, then I'm going to select my virtual height field mesh like this. Alright, you can see how dense it is. And it's all over the place. So basically, uh, the dense is the same. So when you're looking at the far and the, the closer, it looks the same. So we can control that with the LOD distribution. Alright, here we have the LOD distribution is set to 2. Then I can put some smaller value like let's say 1.2. You can see, uh, so it, it is only denser in the, in the closer to the camera, but in the distance, you can see it's, it's, it doesn't have more, 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 more polygons, more triangles. And, and it, it may affect your landscape in a way sometimes. It's really hard to tell, but just play with your landscape and, uh, and also play with these numbers and try to get the, get the result you're looking for. And likewise, you can also use the LOD zero screen size and distance scales and other parameters to like tweak how, how we can distribute these uh, triangles all over the, the, the mesh. Now let's figure out how we can uh, increase the poly count or the, the triangle density over here. So that's based on your RVT height resolution. So let me open my RVT height. I'm going to select my uh, RVT height volume. Then here we have the RVT, actual RVT, and then I'm going to find that and I'm going to open that here. So now we have these RVT over here. Then I'm going to select my virtual height field mesh from the well outliner so I can clearly see the these, uh, these triangles. Then uh, let me increase this resolution a little bit. So let's put uh, increase this number to let's say 4. Now you can see my mesh get more denser as I increase the size of my virtual texture. So I can reduce that to small values you can see like this so basically you you can change the resolution of the the rvt height texture and that will affect the the density of your virtual height field mesh and it's pretty simple all right now let's go to how to do this with your own material so right now i have used uh, open land as the master material or the landscape material to do all these things but this is not something uh, unique to open land. You can do it with your own uh, landscape material as well. I'm, I'm going to show you some of the things you can do to make that enable. All right. The first thing is you need to write your material into the virtual texture output like this. I get the base color specular from my landscape material um, at the end. And I'm going to put that into my virtual texture output. And the interesting thing is happening inside this function. I'm, I'm going to show you right now. So basically what I'm trying to do is I get the uh, displacement, world displacement from the my material attributes. Okay. And then I'm, I'm going to add that into the uh, world height. So here I'm going to get the world height. 
the C height and then I'm going to add the uh, displacement value from the texture into that and that's my height for the RVT. Usually with uh, Unreal Engine 5 world displacement doesn't have any effect but this node is available in the material attributes so I use this attribute to like transfer the displacement value over the material so when i change the uh, displacement multiplier over here and it will multiply that with the height texture and that value will go into this world displacement and i'm, I'm going to simply use that and put it into the rvt and that's all it is and if you look at the rvt cache how we can sample the rvt so let me show you how to do that so rvt cache thing happens here it's pretty simple so basically what we're doing is so we have this this uh, static switch that I enabled earlier, like this one. Okay, at this checkbox, based on that, if that is false, so we send the usual material. And if that's true, what I'm trying to do is we get, we sample the RVT texture, the same RVT we write from the landscape, and I'm gonna sample that and put it as the landscape material. So basically, so that's, that's some sort of cache thing we are doing, and it's, it's quite good performance as well. And then if we go into that, so this is something in you know, open land. it's quite simple. So basically we have the runtime virtual texture sample node and it's sample in the same virtual texture and then put it over here. And we do some transformation over here. And if you are using RVT and you definitely know how, how these things works. Now, I think it's a little bit clear how you can add virtual height field mesh support into your, your own uh, master material as well then if you have some issues or question uh, try to comment on the on below or just come to our discord channel and we can discuss all right let's uh, talk about problems so the number one is this is experimental you can see uh, this is the this is available on the source code in the experimental branch and in the 4.26 and it is updated eight months ago uh, we don't see any uh, updates after that but if you are looking at the 4.27 branch so you can see it updated three months ago and even in the the 5.0 uh, branch uh, it's, it's the same so it's getting updated but it's not a like a very prominent project i'm not complaining here but just to show you how the development goes on and it's experimental and you might see bugs and um, just just you have to deal with it and the other problem is there is no collisions even with the tessellation and the ue for displacement we don't have collisions uh, for these uh, displacement and so even with this case uh, there's no solution for that one you have to deal with that and try to do some other tricks so since we are using virtual textures and there is a good potential we can use that data inside the materials and do something very clever and i'll talk about that in a later video other thing is it's really hard to do negative displacement so let me go to the wireframe mode first so you can see here we are layering a, a new mesh over the actual landscape so if we do uh, create a hole or some sort of like a puddle kind of thing it actually do that to my virtual height field mesh but it doesn't do anything to my actual landscape so you cannot get what you're really going to do so that's a problem but there's a trick uh, you can try i haven't tried that but you can try to use a mask uh, you can try to apply a mask for your landscape actual landscape material for that area and maybe that might work i haven't tried that but i'll try to do it soon and i'll update as i go with that the thing is this is only working with rvd cache so so we had to use rvd cache for your landscape material to work this so basically it's fine but in some situation with rvt cache uh, the texture resolution goes down and, and it doesn't look exactly like the actual texture and that's a problem and that's a problem in some cases especially if you're making a cinematic uh, kind of experience and that's something you need to think about we have some things like that but that doesn't uh, stop from us to use this and also quite interesting thing is so we had a tech talk or a unreal inside uh, chat with the nanite uh, core team uh, a few weeks ago so then uh, someone asked a question like do we have nanite support for landscape in unreal engine 5 and basically they said no they are not even considering for that even in the in the, the, the longer future and they recommend using virtual height field mesh and this might be the actual solution we have to use in unreal engine 5 and beyond even if you're trying to do a uh, displacement with uh, world portion offset and using higher dense mesh in nanite 
unfortunately even in unreal engine 5 stable release which you can see into 2022 we can't do displacement with weld position offset so basically we cannot do something like this with nanite for a quite long time all right anyway this i think uh, this uh, tutorial will help you to like get started with virtual height field mesh uh, with unreal engine 5 and even uh, 4.26 this really works with 4.26 as well and try to use it this seems like the future of how we can do displacement in the landscape if you have any questions on how to use this and try to add some comments and try to join our discord channel and ask questions and i'm, I'm happy to help all right see you soon with something interesting bye